the frame there. Hey, Adam. Yes. It's that time again. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it has. So we apologize about that. The weather up here and travel and all that. It got a little wonky there. Yeah. Nor'easters and such. Yes. Yes. So welcome back to the Gun Collective Podcast. My name is, if you haven't figured that out already, Adam Kraut. And my name is John Patton. And this week's show is brought to you by Freedom Munitions and... Holosun. Holosun. That's right. So, um, we got a lot to talk about yeah, uh lots top, going on topic man. wise it's going to be kind of limited but there's a lot to say on all of them uh there's been some interesting turn of events since we last hung out actually yeah so, it, there's there's been a lot going on um the the gun rights youtube and gun stuff i mean it's all over the freaking place. What I want to say before we get cracking, um, for those of you that are watching live, we're going to do the same thing we did last time. Um, if you want to make sure that we read your comment, you can go ahead and use the super chat feature on YouTube. Uh, you don't have to do that. We will be pulling comments and things like that and questions as we go. So feel free to leave us questions. Izzy, our editor, is going to be there kind of skimming through. Um, but that's a challenge for him. So if you use the super chat feature, it will make sure that we see it and uh, make it happen here on the show. Is that right? Yeah, I believe that's right. That's uh, that's your wheelhouse there. Anyway, so uh, YouTube, what we're broadcasting on. Hi, oh, hi YouTube. Hey, yeah. Don't don't ban us, bro. I just put out another video on on what's kind of cracking on this. So, um, you know, I. I this is this is bad. Well, why don't we start with talking about what exactly it is? All right. So, so since I covered it in a video that's actually doing really well, thanks for everybody that watched it. I covered this already. All right. So let why me, don't you let me go just, ahead yeah, and cover it. So on I, here I have it up here. So YouTube the other day released new policies uh, in relation to specifically content featuring firearms. Now it's my understanding that previously firearms was uh, lumped in with a category of other dangerous. Yeah, dangerous I, in quotation it was marks. Dangerous goods. content, harmful content, okay. all that sort of stuff. So it wasn't it was kind of lumped thing. in with hate speech. It was really weird. Yeah, that is really weird. Um, so it wasn't its own thing, but now they've broken it out Correct. into its own thing. All right. So uh, YouTube prohibits certain kinds of content featuring firearms. Specifically, they don't allow content that number one intels, intends to sell firearms or certain firearms accessories through direct sales. So, for an example, private sales by individuals. So, I couldn't sell you a gun via a video. Bummer. Uh, or links to sites that sells these items, which is huge. Firearms or firearm accessories. That's, that's uh, like that's like Hank Hill. Well, certain certain firearms accessories. Let's let's okay. Sure. You know, we'll we'll give it the. So the accessories include, but may not be limited to. Very key <laughs> language. May not be limited. This is definitely to. written by a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That enable a firearm to simulate automatic fire. Um, I don't know how you simulate automatic fire. Or convert a firearm to automatic fire. E.g. bump stocks, gatling triggers, drop-in auto sears, conversion kits. Uh, uh, I am, so, hold I'm on, pumped let's, about the, the term gatling trigger. I never heard that before. I, I, I'm guessing it's the crank trigger that we've seen in other oh, languages. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot Jerry Michalik made that famous. Okay. Uh, and high capacity magazines, and they use the example of magazines or belts carrying more than thirty rounds. So I guess they actually defined it. I guess there's ornate belts that you get. That <laughs> really? Sorry, I had to. Yeah. Would you buy those in Hot Topic? <laughs> uh, I haven't been in a Hot Topic since like high school. <laughs> oh man! Uh, not that I was wearing or black or anything like that. They had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles T-shirts. Anyway, um, yeah. So the uh, interesting thing here, I think, is the. Convert. Well, I guess they say or convert. Hang on, um, hang on. Uh, somebody in the comments said, "Where is this coming from?" This is literally posted on uh, YouTube's policy page. If you want, uh, I've now put out two different videos on the Gun Collective channel, which you can go click on the links for that um, and get that happening. Uh, and I'll see if I can drop it down here in the comments for you guys. There as you well. go. Boom. Adam just dropped it in the comment section for those watching live. 
Okay. So, um, yeah, so you know, bump stocks. They're, they're basically selling, uh, saying that you can't link to anybody that's selling guns or a whole bunch of different and, gun and accessories, certain accessories, including mags. Well, what's interesting to me specifically is that, or convert a firearm to automatic fire. So drop-in auto sears are regulated by the NFA. They're perfectly they're legal. Totally to, I mean, legal. this is all legal to own. Let me, let's start there. Uh, state laws may apply, but, um, you know, under federal <laughs> law, it's all legal to own. So you're now banning the ability of somebody to link to something that is perfectly legal under federal law to own. Interesting. All right, so moving on. Uh, they also prohibit uh, content that provides instructions on manufacturing a firearm. We do know because we watched the legal brief that you can legally make a firearm at home. Ammunition. So anybody who's teaching people about reloading yeah. is now screwed. Yep. High capacity magazines. I don't know anybody who's making their own, but cool if you are. Good for you. Uh, homemade silencers or suppressors. Also legal. Also legal. Yep. Uh, or certain firearms accessories such as those listed above. So I guess if you're making your own bump stock, uh, if you're 3D printing so, them. So, you know, there's there's an argument being had here about like, oh, are belt loops now illegal because you can bump fire with them? No. No, I don't think so. That's a... Eh. Listen. Come on. <laughs> listen, this is what you lawyers have created with the world. I didn't create anything. First the of world all, has whoa, done the whoa, whoa, lawyers easy, have done easy. this to the world. Yeah, some of them have. Uh this also includes instructions on how to convert a firearm to automatic or simulated automatic firing capabilities. Well, uh I guess unless you're an SOT, uh, if you're converting a uh firearm into a machine gun, like an actual machine gun, you're doing something illegal. Um even though they are legal to own through the NFA. Well, converting one, you can't. Unless you're an SOT, you can't make your own. Well, again, that's legal for SOTs. Y yes, this is true. Yeah, so if yes. somebody is yes, an SOT no, or is with correct. an SOT... You are correct. You are correct. So that, this is the problem, and this is why I asked them for definition on some of these things, because there are a lot of ways for this to be demonstrated and explained in video as Not educational content. Not anymore. It's ridiculous. Well, it continues on. You also cannot show users how to install the above-mentioned accessories or modifications. Now, this one is, as you could probably guess, a whole can of worms. When they say install, what does that mean? Because I saw yep. people saying, well, yep. you know, does that mean when I take my magazine and stick it in the magwell, have I just shown somebody how to install one of those accessories? Yeah, this is, I, I specifically am waiting on an answer on that question. Um, you know what, I'll, I'll try and we'll, we'll deal with it, uh, in another video, but I asked them a bunch of questions about how they're going to police this. Um, because, uh, I guess once you hit a hundred thousand subscribers, thanks everybody, they assign you a rep. So now that I've got a rep, I have a direct line to YouTube. Okay. That's good. And what that means is that I have a play, a person to ask questions. However, this person is not in charge of policy, right? You know, it's it's meant to be a relationship and how to make your sure. channel better and all that sort of thing, not necessarily policies. Right. So she said she said to me that she's going out and trying to get with her colleagues and get answers for this. You oh, know. Well, here's the question though: assuming they provide a response in writing, which is how you were communicating, so I suspect you'll get something back in writing. But so far, it's just been, hey, we're expanding on our existing policies to make things more clear. Well, here's my question though. If they give you a response back in writing, can they they can later just say, oh, yeah, that was not accurate. They, they absolutely could do it. But they can do whatever they want. Well, I, I understand that. But now now is it going to be are people at the mercy of uh, whatever the interpretation of the week is going to be? Yeah. I mean, there are there's already a bunch of nonsense like that happening on a high, high level at YouTube. With uh, things, you know, people were talking about the algorithm, what they did with Logan Paul. Are you familiar with that story? No, but you should probably. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna explain yes. that to you. So, uh, there's I, I, it could have been Jake Paul. I'm pretty sure it was Logan Paul's two brothers, multimillionaires through YouTube, tens of millions of subscribers. Okay, and I, I believe it was. Uh, can you pull this up on Google? Search uh, Logan Paul and Suicide Forest. This young man decided to uh, go to a suicide forest and film a guy 
who had ju- recently committed suicide. Oh, and, the body of a guy. And yeah, so they had the vi- the body, and he's like kind of laughing in the video, and then he had this kind of half-assed apology. I'm telling you, it was it was really really bad, and YouTube took at least a week to do something about it, and then rewarded his video. So the top, it was like this video was so controversial that it immediately skyrocketed to the top of YouTube, right? Right. So they're basic. The algorithm is rewarding this, and nobody shut it down. So once the video got pulled, he then made an apology video. That video immediately went to the top of YouTube. So the issue there is that YouTube is rewarding this type of content. Now, since then, they have uh, kind of crushed this by removing his monetization and basically silencing what he's done. However, he's still got a voice. He's still a huge social media influencer outside of YouTube. I don't I don't exactly know what the current got status 200, is. 200,000 on Twitch, it looks like, and he hasn't posted anything there yet right so this dude's got almost this this guy uh has has been doing this and youtube has taken a lot of flack for their lack of movement on this sort of thing sure right and 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 the challenge is if they're moving that slowly and and just not thinking things through on that high of a level what in the world are they doing what in the world are they doing with gun content? I mean, so many arguments could be made about what, you know, let's say a gun shows up in a rap video. Let's say it shows up in a, a clip, you know, that's meant to be well, fiction. Well, now here's the question. Are people going to start reporting that kind of content and make YouTube work for it? And the the flip side of that then becomes, well, specifically with the, the installation, um, whether or not they're going to say, yes, putting a magazine into a gun is, you know, like, where where is the line drawn? But right. so, so far from what I'm reading here on the screen and not having given it a lot of thought, I haven't spent the time you have on it, it would seem that simply showing a firearm is not something. So a, a gun in a rap video, not a problem. What if he reloads it? Well, right. Right? Yeah. I I, right. I said that that's a question. Right. right. What I, if the guy know, reloads it? it? It depends, I guess, on what they decide install means. If it What means. about historical war footage? I mean, See, these are all legitimate things. But I don't think, I don't think YouTube is going to, if it has a person behind it. I don't think things like that are going to get. I don't think anything's going to happen to that. I think it's going to be content creators such as us, us. <laughs> that are gonna, right. that are going to right. get the the, the you foot know those of us that are neck. here trying to educate, sure, being silenced, right? And and then let's throw this out there. Let's let's talk about the fact that gun manufacturers are currently utilizing YouTube as a way to reach their subscribers, fans, etc. What happens when they're explaining how to take apart one of their guns and reassembling it? Does that constitute manufacturing in YouTube's eyes? Well, again, without clarification of what right. these terms mean, and but these why, these are this the is why the law I think defines about. terms so that people are sitting there going, "Well, we just gave us all this stuff. What does any of these specific words mean?" Because right. we all know how words have meaning and context is key. It's your fault that I, I asked them all those questions, by the way. You, working with you and doing the legal brief has made me far more uh, meticulous, I guess, about what exactly I've been uh, trying to get out of YouTube. It's your R- fault. Remind me to send you a bill for that. Yeah, LOL. <laughs> Raffle. <laughs> uh, we, we had a super chat. You want to pull that up? Um, yeah. Because that was kind of a, a long-winded thing there. Okay, um, so it looks like the first one here: the high cap pat, the high cap mag would cover installing mag extensions. That's from Tim Eighteen Wheels. I don't know if he's referring to. Uh, I, I well, I mean, well, we're only talking about YouTube. Round mag so, with yeah. an extension, a forty-round mag. Sure. Well, it says magazines greater than thirty rounds or belts or belts. Thirty-round belts, yo. I uh, yeah. I. <laughs> what if there's multiple thirty-round belts connected? Um, could I do that? I, how would you connect them with a link? No, no. I, I mean, that was that was, was fac- a joke, Adam. facetious. Keep up. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, it wasn't funny. All right. Uh, Michael Michu wants to know CRTV. CRTV. Question. I've seen that a ton on. I don't Facebook. know what that is, but Steve. Apparently, Steve Crowder, Phil Robertson, and others are already there. 
Jaeger's Liber TV. So Liber perhaps TV. I would. Uh, you, I don't you probably know, I don't about. know about Liber TV. I've seen CRTV, and I don't. That's a Facebook Watch thing, I believe. I'm not really sure how all the Facebook Watch stuff works. I'm trying to kind of learn about that and uh, and maybe get us on there. I don't know. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the super chats, by the way, guys. Gary SI wants to know is reloading for personal use and not for sale manufacturing. Right. Undefined. Uh, uh good question. It's dude. not defined. I don't know. It says just provides instructions on manufacturing a firearm, ammunition, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I would suspect that they're gonna say that uh generally, and I don't know. Let me be very clear. I don't know the yeah, answer. Yeah, we don't have definitive answers. I here. would suspect that it doesn't matter whether you're actually making it for sale for profit or you're just making it for yourself, like most of us do. Uh, we'll take one more super chat right now, and then we will uh, move along here because some of this is still in the realm. Uh, David Blackwell wants to know what about guns in video games? Are they okay? I, I don't know. I'm we not don't a, know. We're, we're, we're not. I we're mean, not I, YouTube I, policy experts. Let Let's be fair. YouTube is not going to come down on their cash cow. Absolutely. Gaming not. content is a huge portion of how YouTube makes money. People watch hours of that stuff. I mean, heck, I'm I'm guilty of it. I watch gaming content. But yeah, don't give me that look, Adam. <laughs> I'm a nerd, okay? Uh, yeah, me too. Let's yeah, let's you, let's you get this clear. Dead videos. I'll watch gaming videos. Hey now. <laughs> okay, look, look. If you're gonna be a, you, you be your nerd. I'll be my nerd. Cool. We'll be nerds. Yeah, we'll in be separate se separatist <laughs> nerds. <laughs> but the the point is, uh, they they are not most likely gonna come down on gun games. And that's not a fair thing. And I think that's why a lot of people are very upset about this, because it's not fair. No, it's... Well, first of all, it doesn't have to be fair. It's no, their platform. I know that. The idea, I suspect, is to crush education and content that channels like ours do in order to stop gun culture. Because let's face it, a lot of, a lot of messages spreads through YouTube, through Facebook, through things like that. And if they can... Uh, you know, dampen or quell a certain message, and that message isn't being shared elsewhere. Uh, especially when the majority of people use, it, uh, you know, I was having this conversation earlier um, upstairs. When the majority of the population uses things like YouTube and Google and things like that, well, it's all well and good if there's an alternative setup where people like you and I can go that we know and we're into that stuff, but it's not hitting the demographic of people that may have an open mind, may be looking for information. They may not know where else to go. Right. And, and that kind of brings us to the topic of uh, these. There's a lot of people out there that are saying, oh, let's do a gun tube. Let's do, uh, you know, a very gun specific thing. And I think the biggest issue, and I, I want everybody out there to kind of voice their opinions on this as well. Um, the, the challenge that we're up against and the reason why YouTube and Facebook do so well is because they are all inclusive. When you single that out, you leave out portions of a person's life and give them less reasons to always be there. And I mean, I, I suspect that a large portion of you guys are not just on YouTube watching only gun videos. I mean, sure, there's a lot of enthusiasts, but there's a large portion of our audience that may have other interests like cars and games and wood, uh, wood turning or what, whatever, making stuff or, or maybe you like um, makeup videos. I don't know. Well, and that goes to the, the question of kind of next on our, our way down here anyways, alternatives to YouTube. And what are they and are they viable? I mean, you know, we see in the comments all day, full 30, full 30. Yeah, full 30, full 30, full 30. Full 30 has existed. Well, we've well, been there. I was going to say that, and you mentioned this earlier, we've been there and people are like, well, you know, you should go join full 30. Either they haven't been there or they haven't seen any of our content on full 30. Right. We've been on full 30 since uh, 2015. It was July of 2015 is when we were on there. I believe the video about gun stuff on Full 30 that I just put out that's doing very well on other platforms is my highest rated or highest viewed video on Full 30. And it's only like, and I say only, uh, 10,000 or so views. In comparison, where YouTube is at 60-some thousand currently and Facebook is at nearly 300,000, I mean, the audience is not there. They're just not there. And there's a whole nother magnitude of issues with Full 30, you know, that I've been getting pounded with questions about it from other content creators 
saying, hey, can we join? Well, Full 30 is not open right now because the back end can't handle it. Right. There's a bunch. Of the, the back end of Full 30 has been uh, broken in some capacity for a long time. It's either sporadic or it's constant. And that's a problem. That's a problem. You know, if, if we're going to open this up, they need to be ready and they're not. And there's, there's been talk of a mobile app since we joined in 2015. It doesn't exist yet. They say it does, or they say it's coming, but I don't know. And there's and then there's the issue of funding. I don't know what they're doing with investment because they keep us in the dark about that. You know, I'm not a... a well, you're not a partner. I don't so. have equity, so of yeah. course. But I suspect there's a, a, a challenge to get funding for something like that. I don't know. And and the, the, the thing that resonates the most with me is that there's not a big enough audience to justify this massive move and they're not ready for it and it sucks i wish they were i really genuinely wish full 30 was ready for this they've been talking about it for they've had years to be ready for this sure. and they're not yeah so and, but but we're still going to keep posting content there well we should uh and i don't see why we would stop that um the other one that uh, caught in a lot of traction in the last couple of days is pornhub a lot of people are uh, going over to pornhub so I uh, actually checked out the terms of service over there because I was curious to see um, what specifically, if it was just limited to pornographic content or whether it was kind of more open to that. And obviously there's some of their discretion in it, but the it really distilled down, I'm not even going to go through all of these, but they, when you use the website, they have prohibited uses on it. So you specifically agree not to use the website for or to the first ones violate any law and they have a bunch of examples there or encourage or provide instructions for another to do so. Um, can't act in a manner that negatively affects other users' ability to use the website. Uh, that includes by engaging in conduct that's harmful, threatening, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's very similar language to what YouTube was using and people were deeming gun content as harmful or abusive or threatening well and again now it, i think the the context is key and it depends on the person who's interpreting what it is or how they want to interpret it precisely um you know you can't uh let's see here you can't impersonate other people you can't post content that contains falsehoods or misrepresentations that could damage the website or any third party uh, nothing that's obscene, illegal, unlawful, defamatory, give rise to civil liability, violate any law, blah, 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 blah. blah. So it's pretty standard. Um, you know, it, it seems to be in... Uh, so there's nothing specific against firearms. No, there course, was... Yeah, let me, let me put it that way. There was nothing that was specific against uh, firearms. There was certain things in relation to pornographic content that was strictly prohibited, like minors, things like that. Sure. Um, but so it'll be interesting to see whether or not they curate it and I think the the more fascinating thing to me about this would be if they started a non pornographic section of a website, uh, you know, their own domain name, because they clearly have the server capacity to handle the oh, traffic. Oh, absolutely, um, they could easily, right, easily stand up against YouTube, right. And that's what I'm curious to see is whether that's or actually not, a very good point. I did not consider that. So you know, I, yeah, and I get it. You know, people are now posting it on, on the the porn specific stuff. But if they look at it and go, you know, we can make a spinoff here where we can direct non pornographic content here and possibly make a viable competitor to YouTube, I would think that they're probably in the best position to do it. Yeah, when you think about who can handle massive web traffic, uh, I mean that that's certainly one of them. We got a lot of questions about whether or not we're going to post TGC on there, and the answer is no. Absolutely not. Um, you know, I, I, I personally feel like it, it could uh, devalue the brand of the, the gun collective. And I, I don't necessarily think it makes a lot of sense for companies that sponsor our content and things like that to be associated with that type of content. Like, I, I don't know that they all want to do that. And I, I just I don't think it's the right move right now. Here you go. So Forbes.com. 2017 stat for Pornhub, 81 million visitors per day. Okay, let's see what we can find a, YouTube 28 stats. and a half billion visitors. So a type year. in like 2017 YouTube yeah, stats, to. because this this is going to be. You said 81 million. Uh, yeah, 80 81 million visitors a day. Um, I mean, I can't think of another, you know, potentially 
Um, I, I can't think of another site that has the the power to and the server capacity to handle that. Yeah, so I'm looking through this. Uh, He's looking through some, some data there. Um, I just want to say a, a big shout out to everybody that's watching live right now. Um, we genuinely appreciate you guys coming here and being part of the conversation. And for those that are listening, maybe in the car or at work or whatever, via the podcast, you guys are incredible. Um, these are very trying times for us. Um, you know, the entire community is trying to figure out what's the next step. Where do we go? What do we do? Can we fight this, etc.? And I don't think anybody has that 100% clear answer. So this is from a website, and I honestly don't know the credibility sure, of it. But, but let, this let, is saying, I mean, YouTube, are they saying YouTube's getting over 30 million visitors a day. So Pornhub is getting more <laughs> by 50 million? Uh, according to that, now, again, I, I don't... I mean, that's more than double. Yeah. It's staggering. <laughs> if that's true. Yeah. Uh, um, he's going to YouTube now to try and figure yeah, this out. Yeah, and I might not be able to get it. If you guys, if you guys out there are looking, um, <laughs> that was a great comment down there in the comment section. But if you guys are looking and you have the answer, if you want to just toss it down there and Izzy will get it over to us. Because I am curious and I can't spend all this time searching for it. Um, but I am curious to see the difference in just traffic to the website. Um, yeah. I think that would be interesting to know whether or not uh, it, it gets more. Um, and then, you know, the other things. So, uh, yeah, uh, some gun channels are headed over to Pornhub. We'll see how long they last over there before they get booted. <laughs> I'm told it's not the first time channels, uh, not, not gun channels, not gun specific, but other uh, things that have had problems with other hosting have gone there for... Uh, a refuge, if you right. will. Uh, we, we've got another super chat here I want to get to because uh, it's the it. only one. Uh, Gary Sai, thanks again. Uh, does the Commerce Clause of the Constitution apply? Any thoughts on that? Does the Commerce Clause of the Constitution apply? I don't, uh, I don't know what that clause is. I figured you might. Oh, I know what the clause is. It pretty much is why Congress can make a law about anything. Um, I don't know. I, I I don't know. It, it's been interesting. Uh, the Prager U case is probably going to be the one that'll be indicative as to whether or not there might be any recourse for gun channels in that regard. Um, that's the case I would kind of keep my eye on. There it becomes a question as to whether or not they're abridging somebody's First Amendment rights, whether or not it's a uh, public play, a public forum or a semi-public forum, or if it's just a private thing. So there, there's a lot of questions that go into a constitutional analysis. Right. Um, I, I don't know the answer that, to that. That's honestly so, the job of the Supreme Court, correct? Yeah, well, at some point, if it were to go up that high, which I, if they were to grant cert, yes. Uh, Michael Mishu wants to know, he says, hashtag Thanks for the super chat, Michael. Freedom Hub, branch off of Pornhub, start business meetings with Pornhub reps. Um. Yeah, hey man, I, if if they did that, that that would be. Oh, like I said, something. I think they're the they're probably one of the few out there as far as infrastructure that could easily just you know flip a switch and, and probably get into it fairly quickly. Yeah, uh, but time will tell on that if they. All right, even let's care. let's keep on uh, rocking so, through. We've got a lot going on here in our Citibank. Uh, speaking of restrictions, uh, City Group earlier today. Um, I think it was earlier today. Yep, today announced that they are implementing a new policy to the businesses that sell firearms. So this affects their business customers. Um, it's the first bank to take a stance in this kind of debate. So they, and the new policy announced, they pr prohibit the sale of firearms to customers who have not passed a background check. Okay. So if you are going through the, uh, if you're delayed. Uh, I suspect after that three-day window passed, you're not getting one if your uh, dealer is a city. Well, they'll stop doing business with your dealer if they find out, I guess. Although, I don't know how they would. Yeah, this, uh, that's so strange. Selling firearms to people younger than 21. So, apparently, city group hates your constitutional right to keep and bear arms. Um, it also bars the sale of bump stocks in high-capacity magazines. It would apply to clients who offer credit cards backed by Citigroup or borrow money, use banking services, or raise capital through the company. Now, here we go. Um, everybody's favorite phrase here. So Citigroup's gun policy has been a while coming. Its executive, uh, Michael Corbett, 
told the New York Times. He calls himself, quote, an avid outdoorsman and responsible gun owner. I feel like that's a rubber stamp for morons. I feel like anytime somebody puts a gun control proposal out and they want to qualify it to give it to, to a certain segment of the population to make it a statement that has um validity yeah validity thank you they they always qualify it with i support the second amendment but but or i am an avid blank but let's be fair just because you go outside does not make you an outdoorsman and just because you (laughs) own a gun does not make you responsible (laughs) wait you mean going down the sidewalk in new york city does not make you an avid outdoorsman (laughs) I saw the rain. I saw a tree once. <laughs> Central Park. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I, I, I climbed a rock in Central Park. I'm an outdoorsman. Come on, dude. And and here's <laughs> the thing. Here's the thing. This this kind of crap could choke the gun industry. Oh yeah. Well, and this, this is, kind of crap is a serious problem. Well, it is because there's no alternative. Uh, that's. Uh, let me rephrase a valid that. alternative. There have been attempts. Uh, yeah, let me, I was going to say, I, I don't want to say there's no alternative. There hasn't been any viable alternative. I mean, honestly, it could be an opportunity for a bank to go, hey, guess what? We support the Constitution. Come do your business with us. Be brilliant. It would be brilliant. Or they could just do business. <laughs> <laughs> it's a novel concept. <laughs> hey, Adam. It's halftime. It is already. It's halftime. Wow, damn. Time's yeah, we've fine. been blowing through this. I told you, you know, when when we <laughs> when we sort out these topics, you know, Adam and I kind of generally discuss them on a high level before we go live, and he <laughs> kind of listed off a few. I said that'll do us for an hour. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So, um, Hollow Suns Elite series. Uh, I'll be honest, I didn't read about it. Hollow Suns Elite series is, that is the, the titanium, the titanium one? nice housing. And uh, I'm I'm super pumped on that. They're still super affordable, even with that housing. Titanium. I think the starting price is around two hundred and fifty bucks. Wow. Yeah, super affordable, and they have green reticles now. So Ooh. woo green. Yeah, I like green. But uh, super affordable. That's Holosun's claim to fame. They've got a bunch of different models now. They're doing the hooded type, the reflex type, uh, the tube type. They are branching out, and it's really cool to see. And they're Honestly, being trusted by law enforcement. I got mine sighted in military. the other day. What's that? I got mine sighted in the other day. Did you? Yeah. Took you went it to the, the range, gun range without me? Head. Yeah. I hate you. Ah, I had to All go. All right. So what about Freedom Munitions? What's uh, what's on about them? Well, they apparently, uh, as we discussed last time, not apparently, they do have the new ammo, the x Def, that's their defensive, their defensive ammo, line. Yep. yep, and as you guys all well know, we've been using their stuff for Freedom Fridays. They've been feeding our guns here to give us, to give you guys uh, anyway, plenty of content to take a peek at. Uh, we're big fans of the Hush line because we like yeah. shooting everything Huge. with silencers on it. Love that. Still trying to get our hands on the twenty two. When that comes around, you'll get some more uh-huh. awesome I'll have videos. To bug them about that, I forgot. Sorry. Well, we got a new silencer to play with too, um, and. Yeah, go check out their stuff. It's cheap, it's affordable, and we got a coupon code for you folks to use. That's TGC5 for 5% off over at freedommunitions.com. Yeah, freedommunitions.com. Hey, uh, you got a new suppressor? I got two of them. You didn't talk about that on the show, so do that. Uh, I got a Dead Air Wolverine for my AK, my Mod Outfitters AK. Things gangster. Your chopper? And yeah, my chopper. It was a good day. I didn't have to use it today. Uh, and I, <laughs> I am getting one of those K&S adjustable pistons. Um, so that'll be awesome. Yeah, and be I am one of two people. That's right. Two that has a gem tech pill bottle. Someone said they think I'm more concerned about my livelihood. Yeah. I, I like to be able to, I don't know, live. That's cool. Hmm. You know, um, I'm absolutely concerned about the fact that we would no longer potentially have a voice. That would be problematic. Yeah, it's hard to. Uh, I like I like being a gun owner. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's all right. Everybody's got their opinion. Uh, so what's what are we talking about here next? So the other two we can hit real quick. Reddit says uh, au revoir to guns as well. I'm gonna hit that on TGC News probably, or maybe over the weekend. I'm okay. starting. Um, I've done. We've done a video every day this week. There've been two today, and there's going to be another tomorrow. We're we're cranking up the content here. Yeah. So Reddit says no more guns and shut down a whole bunch of subreds. Uh, Kroger 
stop selling gun magazines. So this goes back to the, the avenues and mechanisms of communication and sharing ideas. If it's slowly squeezed out of the general public um, place, then the the exchange of ideas comes to some stagnation. You know, it's only spoken of, about in, in certain circles. It becomes circles. a myth. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it's not uh, public con- consumption anymore. So they're they're pulling gun magazines from their stands. Recoil is one of them. I saw that was mentioned in the article. I write for Recoil here and there. Uh, that's a bummer. You've been in Recoil magazine. Yeah, but I, I like not just as a, you were you were there as a picture of you. Yeah, I know, but I, I prefer touting <laughs> that I actually write for him right, every right. once in a while. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, you know, just another another entity that's doing feeling the need to weigh in on something where had they just sold the magazines nobody would care this is what i don't get like what do you gain from virtue signaling it's like star i hate that term by the way virtue signaling okay this is what you get for weighing in and playing politics rather than just saying i'm here to make money i'm gonna sell this magazine if you don't like it tough walk past it buy the groceries get out of my store this is like Starbucks to some degree when all those people were doing open carry um, rallies at Starbucks. And you forced them into the conversation. And forced them into the conversation. And Starbucks was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're just trying to sell coffee here. Like, we don't, we're not taking sides. You know, if it's lawful, fine. If it's not lawful, then we have an issue with it. But we don't want to take a side. We're just here to sell coffee. We can't tell these people, you know. Um, so I think that, that approach... Yeah. Uh, anyway, Washington voluntary gun buy ban. This one kind of blew my mind. Um, apparently, if you lack the ability to exercise any form of self control, you can now self report yourself. Uh, self report yourself? Yeah, starting next year, if you fear that you're a danger to yourself or others, um, you could voluntarily waive your right to buy a firearm. So rather than just not going to buy the firearm, you can go and have your name added to the national database so that you get denied. Wait, was that not a thing before? Like, I, I was pretty sure you could be like, hey, I'm not going to buy a gun. Yeah, but now you, but can, now it's, I now you can apparently tell the, the, the government this. And what I'm curious... Please take my rights! Well, here's what I'm curious <laughs> what? about. Is there a mechanism to get removed from it at some point? Or are you permanently now, like, barred? Uh, That's so weird. This, the senator who backed it's quoted as saying there's an impulsivity and the bill is really designed to try and prevent the impulsive nature that can lead to a tragedy. Well, if I'm being impulsive, I'm probably not going to stop to take the time to add myself to a list to prevent myself from buying a gun because that's not impulsive. Unless I, the government was, doesn't move fast enough to unless, be impulsive. Unless one day I was impulsive enough to add myself to the list and then like three weeks later, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go buy a gun today. I, I don't that's get weird. it. I thought it was kind of um, that's uh, really strange. Yeah, hey, I, we got another uh, super chat from Michael Michu. Do it. Academy Sports and Outdoors still sells AR ARs. Why? Because they're not dicks. Thanks was, for the, uh, the joke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, if you guys want to use the super chat feature to to sneak <laughs> jokes into the show, I am a hundred percent okay with that, as sure. long as they're okay to be uh, read out uh, in public. Okay, we've got another one here that I'm going to grab. You and other freedom advocates should get together and fund a video hosting server a service. Uh, a distributed system with a centralized index of videos would be a good way to start. It should be a serious effort. I don't know anybody that has millions of dollars in their pocket that they want to burn. Unfortunately, the, the problem is the capital that's involved. Even if there you is got together a group capital. Of people, I've already had conversations within the last 36 hours about this. I believe it. Multiple conversations actually. And and there's people that say the gun industry should fund it. Well then if the gun industry is in control of it, I don't know they were there would have to be some kind of bylaws within that corporation to say that one manufacturer does not get more control than their competitors. Well, it's it's nice to think that people should just tell businesses how to spend their own money. Or uh, if they've got it. I mean... Well, no, I mean, the fact that people think that the gun industry should do it. Well, what if they don't want to spend their... They're in the business to make money, not necessarily provide a platform for speech. Well, th- I think the argument there is that... I, I get it. I get it. I'm not... You know, I'm just well, they, being facetious. You know, and I agree with this. The gun industry has not done enough to support the Second Amendment in the last two, three years. I don't think the gun industry, the gun manufacturers, by large part, have done enough. They might not have the financial resources to. 
Especially when you're looking at a downturn in sales and other things. I'm not, I, I'm not making is, excuses that is a valid for him. I'm just That is an absolutely saying. valid point, and I can't argue that. But that that is the perspective. And they, I mean, we had a question. Um, they also very well may be in business to just make money. I, I hate to burst everybody's bubble on that one, but some sure. But if the, I, the again, the point they is have government if, contracts. What do they need civilian sales for? And I, I'm saying this, you know, I'm. I got nothing for that. Like, it, it's frustrating. Yeah, it's frustrating. Hey, uh, somebody said fix next just past the house. Yeah. So in the omnibus, uh, well, was it in the house or was it in the center? I don't know if it was in the house version, but the, yeah, I guess it did. Yeah, uh, it's in the omnibus bill, spending bill that's in front of the Senate right now, um, and that was actually on our list to talk about. So that. Uh, Let's do it. Well, might as well pull those articles up. So yeah, the uh, omnibus spending bill that's now in front of the Senate that's scheduled for a vote tomorrow. So fixed nooks is probably going to go tomorrow through. at one a.m. What? Uh, it's a like two thousand some odd page bill that they had. I forget how much time to read. It was like a day. Did you see the, the picture Rand of Rand Paul? Paul? Yeah. Let me see if I can find that real quick for yeah, people. Yeah, we'll try and find that so we can put it up. Uh, the the next question that was also asked here about Fixnix is what is the NRA doing about Fixnix? I don't know, probably supporting it for, for the... Uh... Yeah, so is NSSF for that matter. Ugh. So I, wanna, I, w I had this conversation earlier today um, with uh, an executive at a uh, firearm accessory manufacturer. I had this conversation today. I'm listening. Um, based on... The reaction to Marty Daniel, uh, he was talking to me about just trying to stay away from political content as a whole. And I think that's reasonable, you know, because it could be detrimental to their business. You're going right. to put that You're ready there? for this and then we'll... You, All right. You want to finish? So it? I want to try and understand and I want our audience to fully understand because I don't think I fully understand what is... Is the concern with Fix Nix the fact that they're going to flood a system with incorrect reporting? That's part of that's it. That's already broken. The that's system's already the, broken. The system's already agrees. screwed up. I mean, this is one of the things, and I, it's on my computer over there, and I don't have it all stuffed in my head. But that's okay. I was working with uh, Firearms Policy Coalition on something in relation to a press release the other week, and part of the problem is I forget what the percentage is, but a fairly high percentage of people who get denied are incorrectly denied right and the yet yeah, yes there is a mechanism to challenge that however that mechanism is taking year plus at this point two years ago they stopped the because so many people were contacting nicks for the transfer of firearms they took everybody from the appeals department and said we're not checking any of this stuff right now so no, you know, they were stagnant for a very long time a right delayed is a right denied oh yeah and it was denied a long time for a lot of people wow uh, so there's a lot of it's a broken system to begin with. So we're not fixing it. We're just compounding the problem. Anyway, uh, so somebody uh, somebody was asking here, and I, I want to get to this. Uh, what is Super Chat? So YouTube Live has a feature where you can donate a couple bucks to make your comment, question, whatever stand out. Um, like I said at the top of the show, you don't have to do that. We don't expect it. Um, you know, that's awesome if you want to. Uh, some people have been utilizing that. And if you do that, if you're if you're going to donate a couple bucks to us to get your voice heard, we will absolutely make sure that that gets read on the show um, within uh, our timeline uh, timeline here. Uh, the We actually have one about this topic. Can you explain Fix Nix to me? Why do people support it and why is it wrong? We were kind of just covering that. Um, yeah, uh, we actually did a video on that because we, we did do a video on that it. gets really it, it gets into it. So I don't think now is the right time. It's on to the legal do brief playlist. There's there's other issues with it. Um, it's it's something that it's just not a based on all the stuff that's out there, the potential complications it could cause. It's just not a good bill. And I get that the idea is to have the correct information in the system so that people who are actually prohibited, like for instance the Sutherland uh, Springs shooter who was dishonorably discharged from the uh, air force i think it was i don't remember uh from one of the branches of service his records were never reported uh so uh, that should be done already issues. it's already a requirement uh anyway i think it's interesting that they're they're making a, a potential law to 
force people to report things that they're supposed to report right. anyway. Yep. Uh, so here, real quick, here's Rand Paul. <laughs> hey, uh, there he is. Yeah, so that's the omnibus spending bill. It's 2,232 He's... pages, $1.3 trillion. Um, trillion. Trillion. One point three. So I, I want to put trillion into context here. I don't think you can. Um, so so and and I may get this way wrong, but I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Somebody explained to me that if if a million dollars is you know a million seconds, you know what I'm gonna look this up. Go ahead and grab a, another. Okay. Uh, uh, so the next article we were going to talk about is uh, a one that I got a lot of questions about. Why isn't the NRA suing about the bump stock thing? Uh, they did challenge uh, down in Florida uh, where this was just passed. Uh, so there's a group of Florida gun owners who have filed suit um, that the ban on bump stocks is an unconstitutional taking of property. It was filed last week. They're that's asking, that's fair. I Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that existed, so cool. Yeah, well, it, it can't be a takings without compensation. Is so, that what they were trying to do? Well, They're just by, saying, give us your stuff? You can't possess it anymore. Remember? Yeah, but... We, we went over that this week in, this yeah. week, in the legal brief. Um, so 17-page complaint on this. They argued that the Florida state constitution bars the state from taking private property, uh, except for a public person, and with full compensation there for paid to each owner. Um Wow. And it's potentially, they're also saying under the Fifth Amendment, it's a takings under that as well. So we'll see where that one goes. Um, I just thought that was interesting that there was, a, in fact, a lawsuit filed about that. So uh, I want to I wanna bring this up here. Uh, hang on. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Just how long. So we're, we're trying to put the context to the number 1.3 you, trillion. You keep looking. I'll, so Super Chat Hike Greg. Gorian. Shame what happened to Reddit. Started as a free speech platform, then the creator killed himself. Sad to see the best station of freedom Did he really ruined. kill himself? Apparently. I don't know. I don't know enough about Reddit. Maybe I, he's, I didn't know if that was like a contextual thing. Uh, Frank, Frank Pliskin. Pliskin says, <laughs> That's a good name. We could start uploading gun content on peer-to-peer -peer torrents. Yeah, that would require somebody to search it out, download it. It would be... It's, it, well, the amount of, of effort... The, part of the, the reason YouTube is so successful is because it's of their algorithm. Well, and it's also effortless. Right. You go, you punch search, and you find it, and, and it you're, just you're takes your you on way. a journey. Yeah, um, Chris Blake, you guys rock so hard. Regular watcher, keep it up. Thanks, man. We appreciate Thanks, Chris. that. We appreciate that. Okay, one million seconds. How long do you think that actually is? One Adam? million you know seconds. I don't know. I can't. I don't do math. Okay. What's that divided one by one million 60? seconds? How many and, and we're trying to frame the context of trillion. 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 One million seconds is eleven days, thirteen hours, forty-six minutes, and forty seconds. Eleven days. Okay. How much do you think a billion is? Uh, a billion. This is it, no, no, no. Hold on. It would be a hundred and ten days or so. One plus. billion seconds is thirty-one point seven years. Wow. Okay, I was way off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm trying to. Uh, and this is why I went to law school. A not trillion school. seconds. <laughs> a trillion seconds. Thirty-one thousand seven hundred and nine point eight years. Oh, we'll pay that, that off. That is the context between... We'll pay that off a, real quick. A million and a trillion. No, we'll just put it into dollars, <laughs> print it on Monopoly money, and you've got yourself a stew. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry that took so long to find, but I thought it was very poignant. All right. Jake Adventure Hunter. Are those guns on the table? They're CCW. One is, one's not. Um, oh, man. Hey, the chat is absolutely blowing up the live chat. So thank you guys. I, I appreciate you guys coming out and and listening and watching. And if you're, hey, if you're listening, um, you download it on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever else we put this. Adam's in charge of that, so I have no idea where it goes. Uh, we send it to the interwebs via the tubes. <laughs> So if you're listening after the fact and it's not live, I, I would appreciate if you guys could give us some feedback uh, on iTunes, Stitcher. What? Yeah, constructive. Or just yeah. leave us a... Uh... Yeah, let us know. Let us know. Ooh, a, a massive super chat here. 20 bucks. Holy crap, man. Uh, Michael Michoud has just been blowing us up tonight. Spending a lot of cash. Hey, thanks, dude. Uh, Cox said in his support of the gun violence restraining order... That it would have to include strict due process restrictions. What would that look like, and how could we ensure legit due process throughout? I don't know 
what the gun violence restraining order thing is. Do you? So I, it's the like red flag laws that we talked about. Oh, 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 the yeah. RPO stuff. Yeah, th- well, it, that's specifically Florida, but yeah, things like that, uh, where if somebody's deemed a, a threat, they can be, you know, their firearms can be confiscated. Um, the problem with due process is that courts have started to say that pro- due process can occur after the fact too, um, as long as you have a hearing that's timely. And timely has been given context to not be very quick at all. In fact, a lot of times. Well, it's a government. So let me let me give you an example here. Um, And I don't know if this has been litigated to the point as to where that particular provision has been as far as timing. But, for instance, in the city of Philadelphia, if you get denied a license to carry or you have one revoked, you can obviously appeal the decision to the board in Philadelphia. The board in Philadelphia um, is currently scheduling hearings about six months out. <laughs> oh, my God. Six months. And arguably, courts would say that that's timely. Now, the question here is, and the problem here is that, obviously, you know, you have somebody who um, is now stripped of their Second Amendment rights. How long does that go on for? Uh, I, I don't know. to. To answer your question, I don't know what that would look like. Ideally, in a, in a perfect world, if you're going to come and say that you're going to deprive somebody of a constitutional right, you'll put them before an uh, impartial judge. You'll have both sides present evidence and testimony. You'll have a judge decide. And if the judge decides, then you've gotten some form of due process there and you should be able to appeal. Is there a form of impartiality existent? today? No, because people are inherently biased. The idea of a neutral arbiter is one that subsists in theory only when you say arbiter all i can think of is halo sorry sorry yeah you are a nerd uh sasd frontier no question thank you for the uh the donation the donation juan machado i don't want to uh, man i feel i feel bad uh i don't want to turn this into like a, a donation hour <laughs> can can we combine all gun groups to form something like nato well the problem not with that, unless we kick out the heads of the nra uh or any, ackerman mcqueen or, Bye! or any other gun group for us you know everybody wants credit is really yes. what, what the yes. problem is it doesn't you know take take any group they're going to want credit for it, and that's going to really be the problem is that nobody likes to share. Uh, Pete Allen says $1.5 trillion is 113 brand-new aircraft carriers. Good God. Just the carriers, Good I suspect. God. That doesn't include Have all the other stuff. on a carrier? Uh, yeah. Staggering how yes. big they are. Yes. People get lost on them all the time. Yeah. All the time. That live on them for months, uh, at, months have, at a time. I have family in the Navy, and we were on, I think it was the Reagan uh, we were on that when it was christened or whatever. Clinton was there, Bill Clinton. Okay. And uh, staggering. I was a kid, but... Oh, yeah. I've been Woo. to, what is it, the Intrepid that's up in New York City, I think, or New York. And then there's one out in San Diego that I was on as well. Um, yeah, so it looks like we're getting to the... Look, see, people in the comments section agree with me that Arbiter is a Halo thing. The it Arbiter. Halo thing. <laughs> uh, hey, you know, Halo was a good game. Oh, dude... Halo, Halo is great. So, what about uh, what other things do we have here in our in our topics that we we need to cover? Do we actually get through all of this? Yeah, we kind of sped it up there at the. Oh my uh, god, staggering! New, we came in late, late to the party, oh, and we still managed to get this out. So, what we're going to do with our time is get through some of the other questions. Because I think that's important. Um, the audience has tons and tons of questions. Uh, guys, if you have one right now, go ahead and drop that in the comments. I know that will make it explode. But let's try to focus the comments on YouTube and uh, the federal gun laws. So YouTube topics and uh, actual gun law regist- uh, regulation. Um, we will be feeding from uh, the questions that Izzy is feeding us. Um, before we get started, John, are you still, this is T. Lee, 1982. John, are you still shooting your HK-45? Yes, from time to time. I am. I like that gun a lot. I still think that's the best polymer frame 45 on the market. The HK-45. The trigger's not the best, but I, I think it's better than everything else out there. Not the trigger. I mean, the gun itself is better than all the other polymer yeah, frame 45s. I'm a fan of HK stuff. You know that. Yeah. I, the only the only thing that gets close is the FN, 
And uh, I think the shape of the grip on the F end is bad and the texture is bad in comparison. It's it's uh, it's not my favorite. Anyway, um, why don't you start with one of the questions here that stands out to you? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. huh? Uh, uh, this one was already kind of asked, but why don't we make a gun tube and get together with developers and not have our rights stripped? Um, funding, funding, funding is the easiest answer. On easy, that. easy, a ten million dollar project. Um, yeah, it's it's funding probably the biggest thing some somebody i keep seeing st- talk about steven crowder uh in the comment section mm-hmm. and people are asking about whether steven crowder uh, i guess he's uh going after youtube and well here's uh, prager here's U inter- is suing yeah YouTube, uh, yeah prager you um, and, and we mentioned that earlier that's a that's a lawsuit that i think is probably going to be kind of one of the defining things in in how this goes for for future lawsuits it's incredible and and it was the former governor of california i believe that said in their video talking about the lawsuit you know mm-hmm. their uh, yes. dramatic video that said the way to find the answers to the questions you're seeking is through discovery in a lawsuit yep can you explain what discovery is? Yeah, so discovery briefly. is essentially where you you can ask for certain information that the other side has that you don't necessarily know. Um, doesn't mean you can ask for anything and everything and they have to give it to you. There's certain things that are protected by different privileges. You can object to the relevance of it, uh, things like that. But um, it allows people to get information that may bolster their their case. So, if, for instance, if YouTube had a, eh, and I don't do this kind of civil litigation, so I don't know definitively if this would be discoverable, but if YouTube had an internal policy memo related specifically to gun channels and, or, well, in Prager use case, conservative, uh, you know, channels as far as historical content as to how, how things are either, um, blocked or deemed inappropriate for yeah, certain controlled, ages regulated, yeah, that that is something that would likely be discoverable because it's relevant to the litigation at hand it's something that you know so if that memo existed then prager you theoretically could get its hands on it and say hey look uh youtube has an internal policy that says x y or z this is why we were being blocked specifically um and it was specifically targeted towards a certain kind of speech it with- could blow the lid off of youtube possibly if that stuff exists it, it'll be interesting to see what um goes on here uh so you know i i don't know other than that the uh one of the questions here in the chat was what are most channels doing to combat youtube's new policy well youtube gets to make its own policies um you you can certainly send them to do you can certainly send them hate mail what we're trying to do is say and scream that this is not acceptable we want to we want to be on youtube i want to be on youtube but these policies are ridiculous, and that's, I mean, we brought we brought Hickok 45 back from the dead, so to speak. That channel was closed. It's happened multiple times. Certain channels have been shut down and then resurrected, and I, I would like to think that we could potentially do that with these policies. I don't know that answer, but I personally believe that we should sit here and try to push before before screaming uh, or going over the the edge like rats fleeing a sinking ship. We need to try to move forward with where we're at now. Why give well, up? I think it goes to actually. Um, there's a comment here that um, says that he, he blames gun owners for a lot of the anti-gun bills. Many people can't be bothered to pick up the phone or send an email, um, and that, that's absolutely true. A lot that's of a, fair point. a lot of people want to have everyone else do the the work for them, but I, I think the same is kind of true here with in relation to YouTube. If you're not sending them communications directly, but you're just posting comments on Facebook and wherever else, it's not going to have any impact. But if their inbox is flooded with people who are pissed off saying, "Hey, what are you doing?" it may cause them pause to think, "Okay, well, what is this going to do to us from a, a financial standpoint or a business standpoint?" Um, so uh, it, and it absolutely goes to politics as well, unfortunately. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll we'll see where this one goes, and I think that the Prager U is going to be a a pretty kind of determinative thing as to where this one ends yeah. up here in the future. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer 
one of these questions here. This is from Garrett Battleson. Any idea why Demolition Ranch hasn't made any public statements yet, even though almost all other gun channels have? It, it's one, um, somebody could argue that Demolition Ranch is not necessarily the traditional type of gun channel. Um, also, I don't know what Matt's stance is currently. Obviously, this is going to potentially affect Matt. But... Who knows? He might be making a statement now. It, it's it's so. I mean, literally, this happened two days ago. Who knows what what he thinks, what he's saying um, behind closed doors, what he's trying to do? I I don't have the answers to those questions, but I, I would like to hope that he eventually will make a statement. Um, maybe not on all of his outlets because he's got several, but at least on Demolition Ranch, I would hope. But. Um, you know, he's he's not necessarily obligated to do so. Maybe he has some sort of contingency plan where it doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And I think it's unfair to single him out. I would love to see him get uh, get behind a movement, but it's, it's kind of unfair to single anybody out this early in the game. You know, the, this liter this policy just went live like two days ago. So we, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's a, a bit bit too early to to make calls like that uh we'll do two more here one i think one's a super chat here um i think maybe not i don't know Never we had mind. another couple of super chats that are just donations so thank you for that guys uh, uh, incredible tonight so the, 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 the other one support the other one we're just going to hit real quick then is if youtube banned you guys what platform would you move to so we, we currently post stuff on facebook we are on full 30 yeah we are on full 30 um there's a lot of people saying, "Are you familiar with Twitch?" A lot of people are talking about Twitch. Uh, I know people use Twitch is a streaming video games. platform. Yeah, um, I have to I have to wrap my head around what uh, what that means. Um, Adam, do you game at all? Not anymore. I don't have I don't time. Think, I, yeah, I was gonna say I didn't. I don't think I've heard you talk about gaming since we've known each other. Maybe like a Wii or something. I don't. I don't know what you've got. Uh, Xbox 360. Okay. I still have it, but I can yeah, tell yeah, you last I never time play I it. Yeah. Um, mm. I'm I'm uh, I mean I've been talking to a few guys about getting into some Fortnite streaming and things like that. Uh, that's a new game that's pretty rad. Um, but that's, I still have the time. Well, uh, <laughs> the the that's one of those things where the only reason I would do it is to literally escape and have some fun. You know, because sometimes you you got to force that Absolutely. into your life. Yeah. You you in fact told me that one time. Yeah. Yes. I still maintain that. Yeah, you still maintain. It's a good idea. But um, we're we're going to be looking into that. I don't know what how Twitch works as far as uh, pre-recorded content. I know they're meant to be a streaming platform, so I'm yeah. not sure exactly how it works with posting stuff and I don't know how it works with gun stuff. I don't know what their terms of service are uh, regarding guns. I just know it's streaming, that's about it. Right. Well, I guess that's going to take us to the end here this week. Um, thank you everybody for taking the time to join us for those of you that use the super chat feature thank you we appreciate it uh you can check out the gun collective on facebook instagram youtube for now where you're watching this currently <laughs> or if you're if you're listening on the podcast itself uh you can check out the videos on on youtube um yeah full uh, 30 full 30 is a thing and uh, of course we want to thank our sponsors tonight hollow sun and, and freedom, freedom munitions. munitions yeah and uh, that'll be all for this week, guys. We will Why catch you. Sound like you're falling asleep. Are you falling asleep? No. Uh, that'll be all for this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know. This this extra large coffee hasn't cut it. Uh, that'll be all for this week, folks. Next week we do have a guest again. We'll be talking with uh, James Rupley, the photographer for Vickers Guide. He's actually a friend. of I mine. didn't know he. I saw him with Vickers at Shot Show, and I didn't know what his role was. He's the dude who took all those awesome pictures. They are inc it's an incredible book. So well done. I did not know he was the photographer. Otherwise, I would have gone over and been like, hey, James, dude, nice James work. Is such I didn't want to awesome, be that guy. James is such an awesome guy. So I'm excited cool, to chat exciting. with him. Yep. Next week. Next week. So uh, tune in then. We'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.